It started like a Cinderella story. A young, beautiful bourgeois girl who caught the eye of the powerful French king. Jeanne Antoinette de Poisson rose to power and fame as the maîtress and teacher, the official mistress of King Louis XV of France. Unlike many other lovers before her, Jeanne secured her position for a lifetime. What made her so different? How did she preserve her influence and the king's favor until her death? Let's find out. Jeanne Antoinette Poisson, later Marquise de Pompadour, commonly called Madame de Pompadour, was born in 1721 in Paris to François Poisson, a wealthy businessman, and his wife Madeleine de la Motte, even though Jeanne was more likely the result of her mother's extramarital endeavors. Under the ambitious guidance of her mother and her guardian, the powerful Charles-François Le Normand de Tournem, Jeanne was drilled to become a wife to an influential man one day. Rumor has it that Jeanne's mother received a prophecy from a fortune teller who read from Jeanne's hand that she would eventually become the king's mistress. Whatever the case, Jeanne received an excellent education, which was usually only reserved to aristocratic daughters. As a young woman, Jeanne Antoinette represented the ideal woman of her time. Exceptionally beautiful, a gifted dancer and musician, full of wit and charm. As a guardian, Monsieur de Tournem was an influential and extremely wealthy man. He opened Jeanne the doors to the noble society. Thanks to his influence, she was able to attend the most exclusive Parisian parties. Jeanne soon rose to popularity among the noble society and was invited to soirees alongside prominence like philosopher Voltaire. Despite taking high society by storm, Jeanne was unable to secure herself an aristocratic husband. At the end of the day, she was still a bourgeois girl during a time where rank and status was everything. Eventually, she was married to the wealthy nephew of Monsieur de Tournem, called Charles Guillaume Le Normand de Thion. He was no aristocrat, but he was rich and spoiled his wife beyond measure. The estate of the newlyweds bordered on the royal hunting grounds and it was here where King Louis first saw Jeanne in her carriage. It is speculated that Jeanne purposely went for a ride at the same time the king went hunting. Whatever the case, it took another year and another meeting at a ball in Versailles for Louis to fall for her. When he first saw Jeanne, the king was still entangled with another mistress, the Duchesse of Châteauroux, who then passed away in 1744. After seeing Jeanne again at a costume ball in 1745, the King of France became obsessed with making her his new mistress. Jeanne's husband was informed to retreat, while the former Madame de Thiol was granted the estate and title of Marquise de Pompadour to make up for her lack of noble heritage. Moreover, Jeanne was taught all the formalities and rules she had to go by in Versailles. The only remaining issue was how to introduce Jeanne to the court. Back then, a member of the court had to officially present a new prospect to the king. Due to Jeanne's dubious and bourgeois heritage, none of the snobbish court members volunteered to sponsor her, which led the king to pay one of the indebted ladies, in the form of the Princess of Conti, to have her introduced Jeanne officially. The young woman made an impeccable appearance even when being introduced to the Queen Marie Leszczynska. It is said that the two exchanged 12 sentences, which was considered marvelous. The good relationship Jeanne would entertain with the Queen would be one of her greatest tools to remain in her position. Unlike some mistresses before her, Madame de Pompadour treated the Queen with respect and even encouraged King Louis to visit his wife more often. While the king had been faithful to his wife for the first years, he did become bored eventually. Despite his religious beliefs and conscience, he eventually gave in to his desires. It wasn't only passion that he was looking for, but he also longed for an intellectual and emotional bond, and Jeanne would turn out to be the perfect fit for his needs. 
As his official mistress, she would become the king's closest confidant and his greatest supporter. She would go above and beyond to entertain Louis with soupers, theatre performances and intimate parties with a close circle of friends. In her presence, the king who was orphaned at a young age finally found comfort. They both indulged in purchasing, building and renovating lavish estates across the country while Madame de Pompadour loved planning their gardens. One of her other great passions was art, literature and music. She sponsored many famous artists and one of her closest friends was no one less than Voltaire. Her favoritism for artists gained her many admirers among them. Paintings, poems and songs were devoted to the Marquise de Pompadour, which enhanced the cult surrounding her persona. The Marquise was also a supporter of the new Enlightenment authors, such as Montesquieu. Due to her, some copies of otherwise forbidden encyclopedias were kept at Versailles. Oftentimes, these were pulled out during the king's private parties and heavily discussed. The king found an equal in Jeanne intellectually, which made their bond grow even stronger. Eventually, it became clear to everyone that the Marquise de Pompadour was untouchable in her position. Courtiers, ministers and even foreign ambassadors paid the courtesy calls to the maîtresse en titre, knowing she had the power of the king's favor. Despite all the power and fame Jeanne held, her position came with a great prize. Many courtiers conspired against her, the French communists despised her for her tremendous spending and the clergy rallied against her. Her health wasn't the best to begin with, but it deteriorated even further during these stressful times. After being the official mistress for eight years and after suffering many miscarriages and losing her beloved nine-year-old daughter from her marriage, the physical relationship between Jeanne and the king fizzled out. However, she remained in her position as his closest confidant. Word spread among Versailles and many ambitious parents set up their daughters to seduce the king. It is proven that Louis had many affairs over the time but only one would become dangerous for Jeanne. The 19-year-old Madame de Choiseur Romanet was introduced to the king by Jeanne's alleged friend Madame d'Estrade. The young beauty won over the king's desire and even brought him to promise her in a letter that he would dismiss Marquise de Pompadour in her favor. Due to her wide network of allies, Jeanne got her hands on the compromising letter and confronted the king with it. Louis, who hated nothing more than indiscretion, expelled Estrade and her family from the court and Jeanne's position would become stronger than ever. After an assailant attack on the king in 1757, however, Jeanne had to fear her downfall once again. Even though the king wasn't majorly injured, he fell into a depressive episode accompanied by a religious crisis. Opponents of Madame de Pompadour were waiting for the king to get rid of his mistress out of bad conscience. However, as soon as he recovered from his minor injuries, he immediately visited Jeanne in her chambers and it was evident to everyone that her position was as strong as ever. Afterwards, some ministers were even laid off due to them conspiring against the Marquise. Around the same time, the political alliances in Europe shifted and the Marquise played a major role in the process. The Austrian ruler Maria Theresia was on the lookout for an alliance with France against the bellicose Prussian King Frederick II. Knowing about Marquise de Pompadour's power, she sent her ambassador straight to Jeanne to pave the way for an alliance. Jeanne detested the Prussian king, who had made discourteous remarks about her. Many meetings were held and Jeanne made use of her influence on the king to advance the alliance plans. The same year, war broke out and France had to fight on two fronts, taking in huge losses. The war went on until 1763, when finally all parties settled on the peace agreement, which mostly restored the status quo of 1757, but forced France to give up profitable territories overseas. 
Many French people blamed the losses on the Marquise's involvement. She was the first one to be accused of everything that ever went wrong. However, the king who was once called a much-loved king became unpopular with his people as well. Jeanne wouldn't have to suffer the consequences anymore, as her health deteriorated more and more. The year after the peace treaty, she became severely ill and eventually passed away in April 1764. The king's grief for his mistress was deep and honest. He had lost his best friend and closest confidant, but he wasn't the type to stay alone. The very same year, he would meet his new and last mistress, Madame du Barry. Jeanne Antoinette, Madame du Poisson, Madame de Tiole, and eventually Marquise de Pompadour held on to her position for over 20 years. She made herself indispensable to the king and formed useful friendships across courtiers to remain in power. Even though she was ambitious without a doubt, Madame de Pompadour kept a good relation with the queen and was said to be warm-hearted with those around her. She knew how to go from the king's infatuation with her to gaining his respect and upright friendship that would outlast every fling he would ever entertain. <laughs>